Welcome to Influential Entrepreneurs, bringing you interviews with elite business leaders and experts, sharing tips and strategies for elevating your business to the next level. Here's your host, Mike Saunders. Hello and welcome to this episode of Influential Entrepreneurs. This is Mike Saunders, the Authority Positioning Coach. Today we have with us Umar Hamid, who is with No Limits Selling. Umar, welcome to the program. Hey, Mike, thanks so much for uh, inviting me on the show. Real excited. You, you're welcome. I'm uh, interested in finding out more about your company and some of your new projects you're working on that sound really, really interesting. So give us a little bit of your background and then what led you into focusing on selling with No Limits. So in a previous life, I was in Silicon Valley, uh, sales and marketing at different tech companies, ran a consulting firm that would launch companies in the U.S. market from Asia, from Europe, from the Valley itself. And one thing I noticed that was really interesting, no matter where in the world the company was from, they would have employees that could have been rock stars. They did a really good job, but they had greatness within them, but it never showed up. And the question was, why not? And people would invest in coaching and workshops, but if change happened, it only happened for a moment. And that was the number one thing that really interested me. Why does that happen? And the second thing was, in management teams, the best and brightest in the company would come together. And when you looked at the whole, uh, it was less than the sum of the parts. Because when people come together, you know, the VP of sales isn't playing nice with the VP of engineering and all that human BS that gets in the way and slows us down. So in 2003, I decided this is a problem worth fixing. And the answer is not through business coaching. It's through applied neuroscience. And that started a whole new journey about how to make human beings awesomer. Well, I love your point that I know you used the phrase very specifically, um, sticking. It just didn't seem to stick. And as soon as you said uh, that change, you know, didn't seem to stick, it reminded me of back in my days working in the corporate world where you'd have your boss go off to some conference and they'd come back all fired up and all these changes. And we literally would, you know, go back to the break room later and go, just give it a week. It'll blow over. And it did. You know, thank you for sharing that. You know how common that yeah. is for employees. It's like this too shall pass. Yep. Just keep your head down and, and go. And it's just uh, startling. And sometimes you have a particular department that they say, you know, the company's doing this, but we don't believe in it. So uh, just ignore it. We're just going to do what we're doing. And it's like yeah. people aren't evil. People want to succeed, but that human stuff gets in the way. And if we could just get people – to figure out that human equation, think of how many people that haven't written books or haven't cured cancer or haven't showed up in the world that they need to to do because of what's happening inside their head. And that's my mission is how can we empower people with the tools they need to take charge of the only thing in the entire world that we control is ourselves. And the only thing in the world, paradoxically, that we don't have a user's manual for is us. The dumbest things on the planet, they give us a four-page or a 40-page owner's manual, and I wish someone would have given it to me when I started uh, out yeah. so I could manage Umar Inc., and that's my mission is to teach people how to do that. Well, I think what is so exciting is um, I'm reading a book now, and they're making this point about um, way back when we were a kid, we were inquisitive, no limits, happy-go-lucky, and then all of a sudden life happens. And so it's like like what you're saying, there's all this mental mess in our minds now based on what we've allowed, what we put up with, and, and life that's happened. And so if we can get some of that out of the way, now is it going to be a perfect control-alt-delete wipe and start from fresh maybe not but i wonder like to your point and i and i know this is kind of where you're headed with your big your mission and calls is if you could take a corporation or a company or or any organization and say what if your people you know from the ceo down could have a small percentage of increase and change in this mindset and approach to human behavior and achievement doesn't need to be 100% but what if it, everyone had this small incremental change what a huge difference that would make Absolutely. And I'm going to go back to something you said. Uh, I think our friends in the world of psychiatry would go, you know, this, this stuff that happened in your childhood that was like traumatic or whatever, we need to just uh, uh, cut that out of you yeah. so you can just move forward. And I think that's the wrong approach. Yeah. We need to learn from what's happened. It's our history. 
But what happens is negative things happen in the past and they have a hold upon us. To some of us, 50 years later, we still have this energetic connection to that past event. And, and my worldview is that event happened. It has a ton of energy in it. What if we could transform that energy from being one that sabotages you? What if we could take that energy because it's freaking powerful and have it enhance what you're doing? And yeah. that's what elegance does. Like, you know, uh, you've seen this, you know, you've got somebody fighting on TV and they, it looks kind of ugly and they may get the job done. Then you see someone that's a Kung Fu master and this elegance and grace and uh, just very little movement with great results. And that's yeah. what we're capable of. We don't and also in the martial arts, I forget which which martial art it is, but it's um, kind of focuses on the fact that you're not making these big blocks. You're taking the opponent's energy from their punch or kick Aikido. or throw and just redirecting it. So it's kind of like um, that. What you're saying here is, you know, there's all kinds of things happening, momentum, energy in our business, our personal life. You know, not we don't need to stop it necessarily. We just need to redirect it in the right direction and what what power that can bring words to live by so you're not just going hey i wrote this wonderful book read it and your life will be changed because we all know that a message in one ear not the other you know it's not going to stick so you have gone to the ultimate next level which is creating a um, app a software to help achieve this so tell us a little bit about what your discovery is and what you're trying to achieve with this Sure. I'm going to tell you a little story first, and then I'll get to uh, neuro boosters is what we're going to talk about. So I had this sales rep come in to see me a few months ago. He's the number one sales rep in his company, and his frustration is that I know I could be doing significantly better, and no matter how hard I try, I can't seem to break through to that next level. So this is someone that's a master at selling, is really successful, is looked up to by other people in the company and beyond, but yet he knows he's stuck. Yeah. So he comes in, and so the first thing I ask him is this. John, uh, tell me about a particular time where you were fretting about not doing better. He says, oh, just a couple of weeks ago, I pulled home in the driveway at home, and uh, before I went in the house, I was just beating myself up. It's like, what the hell's wrong with me? Why can't I get to the next plateau? I said, brilliant. Go back to that moment in your mind's eye and see what you saw back then. So he was seeing the dashboard, the garage door in front of him. He's just sitting there in the car. I said, okay, you're seeing it now? He says, yes. Hear whatever you were hearing, the radio, music, your inner thoughts, whatever was going on here right now. He says, I'm doing it. When you do those two things, you get to re-experience what you were feeling in your body. What were you feeling? He goes, that's weird. I'm feeling it now. It's an uncomfortable feeling in my lower chest. So there's a tool from applied neuroscience that you can use to link that feeling to the unconscious mind that records everything. Had I asked his conscious mind, have you felt this before? He would have answered, I'm not sure, or nope. Yeah. But with this tool, it took him back to a childhood memory that he had forgotten. He goes, oh my God, I've forgotten this. I was eight or nine years old and our family went out to a restaurant and the hostess sat us down at the table. And before the waitress came to take our order, dad turned to us kids, pointed at me and said, remember, don't order steak. We can't afford it. And it created a belief around self-worth and money. And even with that limiting belief, he's the number one sales guy in his company. But that very belief is blocking him from getting to the next level. And had we gone to a, a regular sales coach, it would have been about mechanics of it. Yeah. Had he gone to a life coach, it would have been, you know, you're made of stars and you can do anything. And it's like, oh, I want to puke right now. But anyway, yeah. <laughs> but with applied neuroscience, you can do these elegant, powerful things and get down to the pivotal moment, change it. And I get a call two weeks later saying, I'm not sure what you did, but it's like 150 pounds have been lifted off my shoulders. My level of intensity, passion, certainty is off the charts. And so I wanted to bring that kind of insight breakthrough what if we could give that to mere mortals in the form of an app that would yeah. allow you to decide how you want to feel or act in any situation so this is not meditation this is not motivation this is transformation in the moment when you need it and i think it's going to revolutionize sales you know, as you were describing that story, it made me think of something that I'm confident that you intend and, and would agree with. 
Um, nothing wrong with business coaching, sales coaching, life coaching, all oh, no. those things. But when it, you absolutely. get your mindset, when this guy and what, you, what your tool can do to clear the mindset, it then enhances everything else because the rising tide raises all boats. So now when that person goes back in for some sales coaching, now they're, they're quantum leaping because they've got uh, the foundation set the right way. Brilliant. So, uh, you know, if you want a really good business coach, don't call me because I'm mediocre at it at best. But as you're working with your business coach and there's this mental block, it just bogs down the entire process. And so I'm the guy you call when you're stuck and I get you unstuck very quickly. And then you just go back to your regular coach and go do that. And yeah. uh, your life coach, your sales trainer, your sales manager, because they've got expertise that you need. But if you don't have the mindset right and you don't have the beliefs right, then it's going to be a, a losing battle with lots of effort without a lot of gains. Yeah, that's huge. So tell us a little bit then, um, what would – so this person that you mentioned, he pulls in the driveway and has this thought. What are some other – flags, triggers that someone might be not aware of that might mean that they could benefit by this? You know, so what are some things that are going sure. on in someone's life that would go, ooh, that's a potential indicator? So, you know, if I had a room full of 100 average people and I said, you know, who here would be upset if you can't be an opera singer? No hands go up <laughs> because, you know, most people don't want to do that. So one of the things to look at is your mind will lie to you, but your body never lies. So when you go to do an activity, whether it's being dad and being there for your kids when they really need it, if you feel this uncomfortable feeling when you're doing that or you're going in to do, sell into a $100 million company and everything is awesome, but you go into a billion dollar company and all of a sudden you feel this uncertainty in your body, your body will tell you when there is a block. And so if you listen to your body, when I go to do this activity that I really want to do, I feel uncomfortable. So I'll give you an example. I had this uh, awesome salesperson come in and the only time he feels uncomfortable is when he goes to ask for a referral. So asking for a $500,000 check for his solution, piece of cake for him. But asking for a referral, either he goes to ask and feels so uncomfortable he doesn't ask, or he asks in a way where his voice cracks and he just asks badly. Yeah. And he knows the words to say, but that shows you that there's something inside blocking him. And for him, when we decoded what was going on, because a lot of this stuff comes from childhood, and this is something he'd forgotten. He was in the kitchen with his dad and one of his dad's colleagues from work, and the two friends were talking, and his dad made an offhanded comment. You know, real men don't ask for help. And little Paul picked up that thought and asking for the sale is not asking for help because I'm giving you something of value, but asking for a referral is violating that belief. Huh. And so, so we've created this app and it comes in six categories. And one of the categories is sales mindset. And it's got tracks in there like something called rebound. And rebound, what it does is if a sales guy or gal loses a really critical deal that they were counting on, and more importantly, the SVP in the company was counting on, uh, it could bum them out for an afternoon, a week, or a quarter, right? And they listen to this eight-minute track. He uses a process from neurolinguistics, and he gets them to let go of the negativity of the event, learn the lesson they need to learn, and then it gets them to get into their most optimal, powerful selling mindset all within eight minutes. So they've lost this really big deal. Within eight minutes, they've rebounded and they're on the phone or making calls or doing whatever to move their company forward. And so that's the kind of change that's possible in the palm of your hand. Uh, one of the other cat categories is uh, life's ups and downs. There's a track in there that I think uh, is badly needed. A lot of executives come home and they've had a you know, challenging day at work, and they are physically present with their family, but mentally they're checked out because they are you know, uh, got angst around work and stress and what's going on. They pull into the driveway, and for seven minutes, they sit in the driveway, they listen to one of these tracks called Let Go of Work. It drains the negativity from work. They know the exact thing they need to execute first thing tomorrow morning so they don't lose track of where they were, and they authentically 
and in true reality feel what they felt the first time they fell in love with their spouse, Hmm. with the passion, the lust, the caring, the connection. And then they walk in through the front door, even if they've been married for like 20 years, all of a sudden their relationship with their family just changes because mom or dad has showed up in a way that they're fully present in this loving, connected way. And it's going to change the world. Yeah, that, I mean, so, so with these categories that you're mentioning, the, it comes back to, to my mind, kind of like the, the, I don't know why I keep saying this uh, over and over over the last few weeks, but the rising tide, you know, raises all boats, meaning you can focus on one area of your life and then all of a sudden notice, huh, because I'm, you know, I don't know, focusing on my relationship, I, I'm more motivated to do better at work or because I'm doing better in my health and fitness, I want to do better in my relationships. So speak a little bit about the polishing up and improving your mindset in one area and how it can really impact other areas of your life. Sure. So let me kind of go. Uh, so I, I want the listeners to envision uh, a bunch of grapes. Uh, have you got that in your mind's eye? Yes. So think of the stem as the core belief we got when we were a kid or when we were 14 or whatever. And let's say the belief was uh, uh, somebody that cares about you says, you know, you are worthless. And it creates a belief that I'm unlovable when I'm five years old. And beliefs are total BS, but they're self-fulfilling prophecies. And we look for data to validate this belief. Even though we have four years of data that mom loves us, dad loves us, my sister loves me. But if something traumatic happens, we pick up that belief, then we're looking for evidence. And if you're looking for evidence that you're not loved, guess what? You're going to find it. And it starts creating a bunch of grapes around that stem that are smaller beliefs or smaller behaviors or smaller mindsets that validate that belief. So when we go in and we remove one of those grapes, it grows back. But if you go in and you grab the stem, hold on to it, and pull really hard, all the grapes fall off. And that's why, from a scientific point of view, when you fix something, so sometimes, you know, companies hire me to work with their employees. And they say, well, it's a home issue with my wife, and it's not really a business issue. I said, yeah, don't worry about it. Let's just solve that. And as soon as we solve that, they're happy at home. And then they report back, you know, uh-huh. my boss is a lot nicer now. And it's like the boss hasn't changed. You've changed, and you show up differently. So absolutely, not only do you improve in many of the years in your life, but when you change in your family and you become more passionate and happier and connected, you change that system and all of a sudden you impact how your kids see the world, how your wife sees the world, how your husband sees the world. So not only when we fix one area do we help ourselves in many areas, but we also help a lot of people because, you know, Mike, if a schlep like you or me can change, then there's hope for everybody, right? Yeah. Well, and I think um, let's circle back around with that comment to something you said at the very beginning, which, you know, like these, these, um, you know, the cure for cancer and all these big, big things. Well, if you think about some of these Elon Musks of the world and these movers and shakers, um, how many more hours in the day do they have than us? Oh, yeah, let me calculate here. Hold on. Oh, yeah, none. You know, we all have the same 24 hours and we have opportunities and it's how we fine tune and hone those things that really makes us, uh, you know, take it to the next level. So one of the things that, that I'm finding as it's more real each time I think about it or experience it is uh, many times we have three faces uh, that we have. One face, we show the outside world. And sometimes that look at me, I'm pretty or I'm smart or I'm amazing. And some people show the outside world, look at me, I'm broken, I'm unlovable or whatever. But this is an illusion that we show the outside world. Then we have this delusion of who we think we are, and then we have the authentic self, who we actually are. I think that's part of the human journey. But what happens is when you uncover who you are, flaws and all, and you just share that with people around you, uh, you show up in a more powerful way and you give them permission. So I'll give you one quick example. I was at a wedding recently, and the priest that was marrying this couple, their first marriage, uh, right at the beginning, goes. I just want to let you know, I was ordained a month ago, and this is my first wedding. Oh no! There was like 300 people in the church that cheered and and clapped for him because he was being honest. And we're trained that you know, don't show any weakness, 
pretend that you're this. Yeah. And as we become bolder and we let go of those things that have been holding us down for the past, and we show up in this more authentic way, flaws and all, people see us as more powerful beings, they trust us more, and we have a bigger impact on the world. So when you think you're being clever and deceiving people, you're not. When you show up in that vulnerable way, uh, you make relationships and you change the world. So the imposter syndrome really is not a good approach and fake it till you make it. No, just be, you know, it's kind of like you've heard it so many times, you be you. And, and I've even heard something else um, recently and, I, and it really struck me and I told uh, the person I was talking to, I was like, you need to run with this. And then I Googled it. And it's kind of like already out there. But um, he, he made this comment, real is rare. And that really is the case, isn't it? Wow, it's true. The, uh, so I was at this uh, CEO event. There was about uh, 20 some odd CEOs in the room, and I gave them this exercise. It's like, so Mike, by any chance, do you have a negative inner voice? I would like to say I don't, but I'm sure there's hints of it. Yeah. So for these CEOs, it's like, okay, I'm going to give you a three by five card, and I want you to write down what your inner voice says to you that sabotages your efforts so makes your life more challenging. Everyone writes down to, I collect all the cards, I shuffle them up, I redistribute them, and I tell the first CEO, the card that you have, could you read it uh, as it's emotionally written? And this CEO says, I'm a fraud and I won't amount to anything. It's not his thoughts, it's somebody else's in the group, uh-huh. but they don't know who. And this one CEO comes up to me later on and says, you know, by the way, the guy reading that, uh, John, he was reading my card. And you know what I wanted to do? I wanted to get up and go there and hug him. Huh. I can do that for a stranger, but I can't do that for myself. Huh. So we have, and those negative thoughts are not just things to kind of keep us in line. There's an underlying belief that we picked up somewhere along the way that's driving that behavior. And, uh, and what I have the privilege to do is to help people uncover that belief. And when we uncover that belief and heal it and transform it, that negative voice disappears. So it's that's not like awesome. positive affirmations because yeah. that's, in my worldview, kind of bullshit. Uh, but if you can just remove that underlying belief, then it just goes away. And uh, people get to be their authentic selves and make a bigger difference, if not in the world, but certainly in their world with their family and their companies yeah. and their friends. That's awesome. Well, I, I just think it's so critical and this has so many, um, it's kind of like the hub and spokes, you know, you, you know, don't go out and do this before you get the foundation right, you know, and, and that makes so, so much sense. Um, you don't want to put a Ferrari engine in an old 1970 Volkswagen Beetle frame. It's not going to handle it. So get that foundation right. So what is the best way that people can reach out, connect with you and take advantage of uh, neuro boosters? So, Two ways. One way is to just go to my main site, which is nlpmd.com, uh, and we'll put it in the show notes. And the second one is neuroboosters.com, and that's going to go live November 1st. But if you reach out to me, I'm going to send you some tracks. And, Mike, I'm going to send you a track. It's called Boost Your Self-Esteem. And on this track, what you'll do is go, what's my self-esteem on a scale of 1 to 10? And whatever that number is, you'll write it down. You'll listen to the seven-minute Neuro Booster and it would have authentically and powerfully increased your self-esteem in that short amount of time. Just to show you proof positive, you have the ability to take charge of your mindset anywhere, at any time, in any situation. Neat. Awesome. And I'll make sure to put both of those links in the show notes. And that sounds so exciting. I know I'm going to take advantage of that myself. So, Umar, thank you so much for coming on today. Mike, it was my privilege to uh, chat with you. And... Uh, just share that human experience with people that uh, yeah. there's a better you inside you and uh, Mike and I are going to make that happen for you. Awesome. Thank you, Mark. You've been listening to Influential Entrepreneurs with Mike Saunders. To learn more about the resources mentioned on today's show or listen to past episodes, visit www.influentialentrepreneursradio.com.